So I want to talk to you about 10 ways in which improv can be beneficial to you, each one of you directly in the workplace. Number one, improvisation teaches you how to control your energy. If you're feeling low, you can do certain breathing exercises, certain physical movements to help you get your energy up. If you feel like you're all over the place, jumping, you had too much coffee, you <laughs> can center yourself and bring it down. But even more importantly, it lets you notice energy in others so you can match their energy level so that you can form an empathetic connection. Matching energy is very important to form a connection. Number two, it helps you build your confidence. In improv, like I told you, when people are working on a stage, they look at each other and have an eye contact. Eye contact. And eye contact helps you form that connection. So improv teaches you to make eye contact. Improv also teaches you how to stand. Are you playing a confident businessman or a timid shopkeeper? A timid shopkeeper or a confident businessman? It teaches you how to identify these different postures and what they convey. You can use that to build your confidence. Number three, never freeze on stage. Never freeze in a meeting. Never freeze at a conference. You know why? Because in improv, it's not about all that you've memorized and are ready to just blurt out in front of people. It's about taking, taking it in the moment. All you have to do is bring a brick. <laughs> the others are bringing a brick and you build something together. I never freeze up here because I know even if I freeze, all I have to say is I'm freezing right now. And by saying that I'm freezing, I'm saying something. I'm not freezing. Number four, be creative. There are ways to do certain exercises in which you can brainstorm ideas with yourself. For example, there's a fantastic blogger called James Altucher. He says, as an exercise, just write down 10 great ideas every day. But the important thing is, don't filter them. Self-editing and self-judging are some of our biggest enemies. Instead, you let your creativity flow and then converge upon good ideas. There are improv exercises that focus specifically on this, and you can use this to come up with marketing campaigns, product ideas, or ways in which to engage with customers at a trade show. Number five, learn to tell stories. Stories are what make us human. You tell stories when you're going for a job interview. You tell stories about your product when you're talking to a customer. You're telling stories when you support a customer in after-sales support. Learn to tell stories because facts are for the mind, stories are for the heart, and we make decisions with our heart. Number six, it will train you to look for opportunities. There is something called the reticular activating system. What that means is if you have a goal, and then you train your mind to look for opportunities to get to that goal, your subconscious mind is looking for opportunities. So training your mind to look for such opportunities is part of improv because you have to look for opportunities to build something together with your scene partner. You can do the same at work. Number seven, connect with your team. Sometimes when you want to form a relationship with your team, you have to match their body language. Are they using certain key phrases, certain keywords? Use the same keywords. For whatever reason, they'll be like, I feel a connection. They won't know what you're doing. But that's because you're doing all these things, matching their physicality and their verbal language. That will help you connect with your team members. Number eight, break down silos. There are so many different silos, HR, finance, marketing, sales, and each has their own requirements and constraints, but they don't talk to each other. But when you learn to form these connections, you break down barriers, and you look like a star in your own company. Number nine, learn to manage pushback and conflict. Everybody thinks they are right. Nobody's <laughs> thinking, I'm going to push back. I know I'm wrong, I'm just going to push back. No, they, they have a reason for pushing back. Everybody has their own point of view that they believe in. So if you know how to accept their pushback and then probe it saying, yes, and I want to know what makes you say that. Yes, and there is another point of view. By using the slight change in point of view, you can usually form a connection, an empathetic bond, and build something together. 
finally, I think the big takeaway from all this is that for me at least, my brain just is nonstop talking, 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 talking. When you do improv, you stop thinking because you have to be in the moment and listen and respond, respond authentically. That to me has been one of the biggest values of improv. It's almost like meditation, being in the zone, being in the flow. So to bring all this together, I think the world is changing at an increasingly rapid pace. We know that change is coming, we just don't know what. I can't tell you what you have to do, but I can tell you that getting improv into your skill set will prepare you for all that coming down the pike. Would you like to try a few exercises just to get a feel for this? Yes. Okay.